Lads, welcome back to Fusion YGO. It's your boy Christian, the Haver Card Man, back at you with another combo tutorial today. You guys seemed to eat up that agent deck profile last week, so I figured I wouldn't make you wait and I would just get it done right away for y'all. Uh, before we get into the combo tutorial today, though, I did have to make some changes to the deck thanks to the new ban list. So, unfortunately, we did have to remove the Barone from our extra deck, and to compensate for that, we also took out two Celestial Transformation and one Bala Hala Hall of the Fallen so that that way we could throw in three copies of Nemesis Corridor and one copy um, which is going to replace one of the copies of Moon here because we do have two in the deck but really it never comes up to play two so I'm going to end up cutting one of these and we're going to throw in a Cupid Pitch instead so these are going to be the five cards that are going to get changed here um, these ones are already in there and then like I said once Cupid Pitch shows up we'll be dumping Moon for that so that we can go search for our corridor if we don't open it at that point we can even elect to cut down the corridor to just one copy if we wish um, but for right now having three just for the consistency until we see the cupid pitch is perfectly fine so i just wanted to make you guys aware of those changes before we hop into the combo tutorial today and once again before we get into it if you guys enjoy the content <clears throat> don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and consider becoming a channel member if you guys enjoy the content that'll give you the opportunity to be able to see it early give you some other cool perks without further ado uh this deck does have a lot of non-linear combo lines but there are a couple that you can kind of do that sort of follow a path and then you can extend from from there depending on how your hand is sculpted so for the combo that i'm going to start with before we do a test hand you just need to open any two of these three cards uh a neptune earth or venus you need to open two out of three of these this combo with Neptune and Venus is your worst one. Ideally, you want to see Earth with either Venus or with Neptune because then Earth just searches the last piece for that combo. But Neptune and Venus can still work as well. It just really helps having the tuner access right off the bat. But uh, we're going to start off with those, and I'm actually going to start with Earth and Venus here for the combo. Uh, baseline, you're just going to normal Earth and then be able to use that to search for your Neptune. Um, we do need a random discard as well, so I'm just going to grab a card here and throw it down. Um, so we have Earth on field, and we're going to go ahead and use our Neptune to pitch itself and summon out our Venus. We are then going to use Venus's effect to summon a Mystic Shine Ball for 500 life points. We're just going to do that all three times, so let's go ahead and speed through that and just get all three copies out here. Currently, zones do not matter, um, so we'll just get all three of our Shine Balls out because we are going to get rid of all these bodies through the course of this combo here. So now from this point, we're going to take two of our Shine Balls, since they are both fairies, and link that off into our copy of Protect of the agent's moon from here we're going to activate the effect of moon on summon to be able to dump ourselves a card that lists sanctuary in the sky uh from our deck to the graveyard which in this case we're going to send our majesty hyperion from here we're going to go ahead and use our majesty hyperion effect to banish our neptune from the graveyard to summon it back out we're going to activate neptune's effect at this point to go grab ourselves a sanctuary in the sky from the deck here so there's that uh, we'll go ahead and activate that now just so that we know we have it live because that will be relevant for a lot of effects. We will now use our last shine ball and the moon here to be able to go into our celestial night lord Parshath. Uh, his is not an on summon effect, it is an ignition, so we will go ahead and once he is resolved summoning, we'll use his effect since we control Sanctuary in the Sky in the field to pitch the extra card in our hand, just a random Nemesis Corridor, we'll pretend that was just useless. Um, we'll go ahead and now use his effect to grab a Fairy Monster from deck since we have Sanctuary in the Sky in the field, we'll grab ourselves an Archlord Christia. Now, with Christia, you can summon it via its own summoning condition. Uh, usually you're using the Chaos Monsters to manipulate the fairies in your graveyard, currently we do have four in grave so it is possible to summon right now but it wouldn't be a very great end board if we did that so we're actually going to synchro with our majesty hyperion and our earth here for a level 10 synchro into our master flare hyperion and from here now we can use master flare hyperion's effect to send an agent monster from our deck to the grave here and we're going to send our one copy of the agent of destruction venus to copy its effect now this one will allow us to pay life points and multiples of 500 to summon that many shine balls and then they go to the bottom of the deck when they would leave the field so we'll just go ahead and summon back all three of our shine balls here so now we are back at a point once again where there are four fairies in graveyard but we have no zones left and if we start linking stuff off that's not the shine balls then we do have to work 
worry about fairies being back in the grave. So here we are going to link off our two shine balls, which are going to go back to the bottom of the deck. Since they are non-link monsters, this allows us to freely go into an IP Mascarena for extra setup. Once again, we do still have only four fairies in grave, so the Archlord Christia is completely viable. It would just prevent us from special summoning at this point. Um, if we did that, then we would still have a disruption from Master Flare Hyperion, and if Christia gets turned off, we have an IP Mascarena that can make an Apollosa pretty easily. Um, if you wanted to extend further before going to that point, there definitely are things that you could end up doing instead. You could even just skip the Archlord Christia, instead using all four of these monsters if you really wanted to, to go into a Saryuja. This could allow you to draw four and put three of them back. Um, that is definitely an option if you want the extra and then you can use sorry you just effect to just summon the Archlord Christia So that way at least you have a bigger body on field But personally, I think it's better to just summon out the Christia Leave this stuff on board. So then you have either a potential follow-up or you have um, Ways to play during your opponent's turn should they turn off your Archlord Christia uh, so that's kind of a baseline combo for just those the chaos monsters add a lot of versatility to this You can go a lot further with this line getting more link monsters or more boss monsters on field This is just kind of like box standard where you'd want to get to basically you wouldn't summon the Christia yet And you just go from here with your chaos stuff on how you want to proceed You can easily set up a nice Apollosa and other boss monsters as well on top of this end board um, But this is pretty much just a way to kind of start and then from here it deviates into whatever you have available So let me go ahead and shuffle up and we'll see what a normal five card hand looks like so that you guys can get a better scope of this deck and how it plays let's go ahead finish these last couple do a quick cut and let's deal out our opening five year chaos creator nemesis corridor already a pretty decent pairing uh hecatrice that's a good way to get stuff set up agent of creation venus perfect we do have a combo and a chaos dragon living here okay actually a pretty good opening hand we didn't open the two card agent combo but venus on its own is a very good card so let's actually start off by discarding our hecatrice here because it is a light monster that we do kind of want in the grave so we'll use that to go ahead and search for our valhalla hall of the fallen from the deck here and there it is all right, so then from here now, we can go ahead and activate this Valhalla Hall of the Fallen to use its effect and special summon our Venus from the hand here. We will use our Venus to go ahead and summon our three Shine Balls once again. Of course, this is just once at a time, but I'm just speeding things up here for the sake of simplicity. So we'll get our three Shine Balls. Okay, so then from here, we're gonna link off our two Shine Balls. We're still gonna go for our Moon, but we're actually gonna change it up a little bit because of the way that we opened. We are not going to send the Majesty Hyperion. We are actually going to use its effect to dump our Neptune here because we want uh, to be able to banish it from our graveyard to get the Sanctuary in the sky. So uh, we only control lights at the moment, but that's completely fine because what we can do here uh, is we can actually even link three with our Moon first to go into our Celestial Night Lord Parshath. Being able to banish three with our Chaos Dragon Levianir will banish the Neptune and two of our, actually we'll banish the Neptune, one of our Shine Balls and the Moon here to get rid of those. And then Neptune's effect, uh, well, I guess we'll finish resolving Levianir's. We'll just summon back the Hecatrice just to have it. Um, and then now Neptune's effect can activate to be able to grab ourselves the Sanctuary in the Sky from our deck here which we can now activate to have online. Uh, we probably want to find another way to get a card in our hand first, potentially before discarding for it, uh, or we can go straight for it. It just depends on if we want the Nemesis Corridor for the Colossus, or if we want the Chaos Creator for free extension here. Um, genuinely, I think it's fine if we just get rid of the Chaos Creator. It does produce two bodies on field on a way to recycle a lot of stuff, but it's fine. We'll go ahead and Celestial Night Lord Parshath to discard him from our hand to search our deck for a fairy and we'll grab our archlord christia here uh so currently in the grave we have two fairies only but we will remedy that here in just a moment so we'll go ahead and use our nemesis corridor now we'll put our moon back in the extra deck here to summon himself out we'll tribute him off for the colossus uh you could change up the sequencing a little bit because you probably would want to set up apollosa before going for colossus so you could try to dodge nib in case your opponent has it um so in that case you would just link off these two for the apollosa first is all you would have to do so there okay so that solved uh so currently we have Currently, we now have our four fairies in grave. I would like to link off the Hecatrice and the Levianir for an IP, 
but this situation is kind of unfortunate because that would put the fifth fairy in our graveyard and make it a little bit tough so we're just gonna go ahead and summon the christia here and call it a turn of course we would want to summon colossus in defense i just did it uh in attack to show it off but so you would have these guys here hectrice is also in defense because i forgot levy here summons in defense only so you have an archlord christia two matt apollosa and a thunder dragon colossus pretty easily uh unfortunately no follow-up because of the way that we had to do it it was a little bit of an awkward combo having to pitch that chaos creator which would have given us follow-up and not having the tuner for like the master flare hyperion was kind of rough but there is definitely still ways to play around that and i still think this is a pretty decent end board well guys that is gonna do it for today's combo tutorial let me know what you think down in the comments if there's any way you think i could improve this definitely let me know i know some people mentioned in the last one not having diviner of the herald and dryas hierarchia um honestly i forgot about those cards when i built the deck and i didn't have them on hand so i didn't play them i think this version is just fine i'm still gonna run it to my locals which is hopefully gonna be coming this week right now it is planned we're just gonna hope that nothing falls through there so that we can go through it and i'll record some live duels there maybe get a couple other deck profiles of what people are playing at my locals so you guys can take a peek at that and until next time lads once again if you like the content don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button down below and we'll see you all in the next video as always good fun have luck